You guys have asked. You've begged. You've pleaded. Test the Defbont's app. Today is that day. That's right, friends. Today we have the Apocalypse by Defbonts. This is the 4,000 watt version. Let's get it unboxed and take a closer look. First thing we notice is some stickers. I always warn people about putting stickers on your car, telling people what kind of stereo you have, but it's cool to have them. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Also comes with a warranty sheet, as well as an owner's manual, which is in English as well as Russian. And then Alan threw in two of his keys, because you know we gotta have those. And here's the bass remote. Looks a lot like some of the other bass remotes we've seen before. Has temperature, clipping, all that good stuff. And then we have the bass remote cable. Connects into the amp using the solid connection. And let's take the amp out of the package. Here's all the goodies that come with this amp. The AAK 4000.1D. The K in AAK appears to mean Korean. That's right, this is a half-bridge Korean amplifier that seems to be made for kind of the higher-end bass heads or the SPL market. Here on one end of the amp, we'll see the beefy Tiffany-style inputs and outputs, also a power and protect LED, gain control from 0.2 to 6 volts, subsonic 10 hertz to 50 hertz, bass boost 0 to 9 dB. We also have the remote connection for the remote bass knob, low-pass filter 250 down to 35 hertz, phase variable 0 to 180 degrees, also a clip limit off and on, and a master and slave connection, also a switch, that way you can hook up two of these to have more power. Flipping the amplifier around on the other side, we have double one alt inputs. Uh, those are oversized as well. You can see here there's also remote in on the right side, and on the left side there's a remote out, so you can daisy chain multiple amps. There is two speaker outputs using approximately eight gauge wire, but again, this is a mono block amplifier, so you're not gonna get stereo connection by using both. It just makes it easier for multiple subs or dual voice coil subwoofers. The amp feels very substantial in weight. The thickness of the heat sink is definitely there. Plenty for dissipating heat. As far as dimensions go, 21.3 inches on the long side, 10 inches for the width, 2.5 inches for the height, millimeter equivalents there as well. As far as ratings, four ohms, 1,350 watts, 2 ohms, 2,500 watts, 1 ohm, 4,000 watts. These are all RMS power ratings at 14.4 volts, 1% THD. At the time of the video, the amp is $880. Again, this is a high-end 4K amp designed for SPL applications and heavy use. Now let's fire up the good old SMD, the more engineering amplifier dyno, to find out what the true power of this amp is. Never seen these tests. On the left, the RMS power output in watts will be displayed. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, the voltage of the dyno will also have the remote indicator so we can calculate efficiency. The amp dyno tests show three different modes, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. The certified mode takes us to 1% distortion. Uncertified takes us to clipping. Dynamic tests the dynamic capability of the amp. Check video description for a detailed video explaining these. This here's my favorite part. First up for testing, four ohms, rated 1,350 watts at 14.4. Certified test, this is where it's rated 1,350. See what we get. And yeah, 1,397. Voltage is a little high, 14.81. So let's drop the voltage down just a little bit and try this again. It's hard for these tests for me to keep the voltage right at 14.4 because of the LTO bank. I'm usually either higher or just a little bit lower. 14.52, we got 1340, so literally right at the rated power. Uncertified to clipping, which honestly, SPL competitions and how you guys are going to use these amps, clipping is what you're more concerned about than the 1%. See so what we get here. 1494 at 14.71. Again, our voltage is strong, and I would... Um, I would suggest that if you run an amp this big, make sure you have plenty of voltage. Most of you can be running lithium anyway. Dynamic power, 1700 plus at 14.92. Let's check that efficiency at four ohms, right at 80%, 79.6, very good. 
So some of you may be wondering, what is this efficiency we're talking about? And it's a ratio of the power input versus the power output. Class D amps typically get between 70 and 90%. Class AB between 40 and 70%. This means you always have to provide the amp enough power so it can do its output. So you have to have strong electrical. Now, two ohms, rated 2,500 watts. Let's try the certified test first. The suspense is building. Can we get it? Oh, yes. 2670 at 14.58. Let's reset the dyno for the uncertified run, which takes us up to the clipping point. And here we go. We're going to bust 3K. 2706, 14.49. What about that dynamic track where it sends a 40 hertz kind of like a pulse tone into the amp? You can see the lights are flashing there beside me. And there's our 3000, 3086, ooh, 3116, 14.79. Efficiency we measure 79% at two ohms. We liking that. Now let's try one ohm. This is where it's rated 4,000 watts at 14.4 volts. Certified test, here we go. Up to 1%. Can we get 4,000? Yes, we do. 42.64 at 14.27. So in this case, we dropped just a little bit below that 14.4 rating and still got the measurement that they promised us. Uncertified up to clipping. And there you go. 44.19 at 14.08. Now we did take an opportunity here to push in the clip limit button to see if it made a difference. So let's try this run again. Voltage may be just a little bit different. And power output, we got 45.54, so we actually got a little bit more power pushing in the clip button, which doesn't really make sense to me. But um, either way, if you wanna protect your speakers, you might wanna push the button in to enhance the abilities amplifier to stop the clipping. Dynamic, 5291, 14.74, good dynamics here. 72% efficient at one ohm. That's right in our expectations, so no problems there. As far as results, if you wanna pause this, you can see all the numbers. We just pretty much showed you all these. If you wanna see more, make sure you stick around to the end because I will show some additional tests. Now let's find out how this works with the quad box and the square subs. Would Flex Luther approve? This uh, bass remote's really cool because it's got a green backlight and it's not too bright. It gives you a voltage it gives you temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius. So let's see if it bumps. Before you guys complain, yes, there is a lot of stuff rattling in the background. That's a lot of the noise you're hearing. But uh, just check out the flex here. This is such a cool song for Bassatronics. You guys have to check it out. I'll link it in the video description. But um, no problems here with the amp, with the subs. Sounded great. And uh, so next, let's take the bottom panel off, see what it's all about, what's inside. Here we can see the flyover of the Def Bonce AAK 4000.1D. Lots of Korean goodness here. Four power supplies, four transformers here. There's a lot of caps. 16 1200 microfarad, 35 volt on the power supply side, which gives us 19,200 microfarads of capacitance. Then on the rails, we have 18 680 microfarad, 160 volt caps, 12,240 microfarads of capacitance. Now there is some debate whether the multiple number of small caps or the fewer number of big caps is better. I'll leave that up to you guys to decide, but I've heard kind of both <laughs> scenarios. Here's the board for that clip limit function that's built into the amp. You can see all the electronics there. Now let's move on to the pros and cons, things I like, things I think could be better, at least things to be aware of. First off, build quality is excellent. The bass remote's very good. I like the light is not too bright. It has all the functions you need. 
Cool operation. Doesn't have a fan, but doesn't seem to need it. 24 dB per octave crossover is nice. Clip limit function. Also has a remote out, so you can power another amp. And it is linkable if you want to hook up multiples. Things that could be better. The power input order. And I've talked about this before, but it's got the two insides are for the 12 volt. And this is kind of something that's needed for the power supply. So there's nothing really you can do there. Clip limit. Does this function actually work right? Um, appears to do about the same power. There is no active cooling, but I mean, this amp is big. It's got a big heat sink. I don't think that it needs it. Uh, Korean means big money. So get ready to pay if you want an amp like this. So there you have it. My review and test of the DefBonce Apocalypse AAK 4000.1D. Definitely a beast of an amp. If you need this kind of power, if you need performance, if you need reliability, this thing's built really well, you should check it out. You guys may notice this video said it was sponsored in the bottom as you're watching it. If you want to check it in the video description, I'll explain what that means in this case. Thanks as always for watching and supporting. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. So I know you guys want me to drop the ohm load a little bit lower. Let's try 0 0.8. See how this amp performs. Certified test first, a 1% distortion. What are we going to get? Oh, 4871, right at 14.44. So nearly 5,000 watts. Now let's see uncertified. Can it bust the 5K? Let's find out. Can it do it? What's your bet? Yes, it can. 5,060 watts at 14.22. This amp is strong. Dynamic. What about that? And again, we got plenty of voltage here. We're using the lithium bank. It does have nice dynamics. Over 6,000 watts. Big D. Be back soon. You know how them sound waves go? That's a lot of celebrities. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. Through the system, I don't want to be a slave. I've been doing shit my way.